The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Fill our minds with your peace and our hearts with your love. Amen. Amen. I invite you to focus on the gospel story this morning about Jesus in the temple. This story is in all four gospels. Unlike in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, known as the synoptic gospels, which places Jesus' cleansing of the temple immediately before his death and resurrection, John places Jesus taking on the temple early on, right after his first miracle at the wedding in Cana. Now John was the latest of the four Gospels to be written, and by that time the Romans had already destroyed the temple. The writer of John's Gospel may be showing the early Christians who find themselves without a temple, which would have been considered the central place in which to worship God, he may have been showing them that they no longer need it. In the body of Jesus, they and we also encounter God. Now let's back up for a moment. Remember the Gospel of John begins with, the Word became flesh. Jesus' humanity pervades everything he says and does in his ministry. The deep reality of this story is not Jesus' anger, but the authority Jesus as a human being claims for himself through his words and actions. Jesus took on the whole power structure of the temple, challenged all of its traditions, the Passover was a pilgrimage feast, and many coming to the temple would have traveled a great distance and so could not have brought animals with them. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they would have needed to buy animals to sacrifice, and they would have needed to convert their money so they could pay the temple tax. Roman and Greek coins, which had the head of the emperor on them, had to be changed into the currency used in Jerusalem. The whole system was corrupt, and thus people had to pay extremely high prices for the animals and high amounts to exchange their money. Jesus confronts everything, the abuses of the system and the system itself. The temple leaders could only hear Jesus' word on a very surface level. And you remember from your Bible stories, this seems to happen often in many of the count encounters Jesus has with those who don't understand him. The Jewish leaders missed what Jesus was trying to tell them. 
Jesus has the authority to challenge the temple system because he is the center of God's presence on earth. And God, as known in Jesus, not the temple, should be the primary focus of worship activity. When I read um, more about this story, there was a line that I will quote, which helped make what Jesus did relate to us in our journey today. Jesus is not against Judaism per se. He was an observant Jewish male. What Jesus does is to challenge a religious system so embedded in its own rules and practices that it is no longer open to a fresh revelation from God. Is this still a temptation for us today as it was during Jesus' time? Maybe it's a good thing to examine if the rules and regulations of our faith tradition sometimes get in the way of seeing God in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Maybe some things enhance our relationship with Jesus and God. Maybe other things block our relationship with Jesus and God. Do we keep the focus on who and why we worship versus only on how we worship? We have a beautiful building here at St. Philip's, and I'm so glad there are people here to be in this building today. Many of us, and also many in our community, enjoy this building immensely. Fortunately, decisions to invite others into this space, for the most part, are inclusive, and that is good. Maybe it's easy for us, though, to forget that God is not confined to this central worship space but rather is embodied in the person of Jesus. Our presiding bishop constantly tells us about Jesus and the way of love. Love is what we are to take into our homes, our communities, and the world. Have there ever been times when you thought a particular person sitting here in the nave of St. Philip's was not okay to be here? Maybe you felt a need to check out someone. Obviously, that someone must have looked or acted differently from the norm. Interesting, isn't it, that we humans can easily become possessive of a space or a building, and though we may not even intend to do so, we can sublimely or even directly send the message to someone that this space is just for those who've been here for a very long time and who tend to live their lives in similar ways. Granted, we may not charge a temple tax, but somehow do we send the message that someone else is not welcomed? I remember working for a long time in the post-Katrina period through the church. There were stages of recovery that churches went through after having been leveled to the ground. It was fascinating that when churches erected tents to help with worship gatherings, because it was clear rebuilding their churches was to be years in the making, many people were drawn to come and be a part of the singing, the praying, the Holy Eucharist that occurred under the tents. I heard many church leaders say that not all those who had worshiped under the tents stayed with the congregation when there was a building to move into. Something to think about. Another example that we have mentioned in recent times is this past year of the pandemic, when this space, this beautiful space, was not readily available for us to feel close to God. We had to be creative and find a space to think about God, maybe to pray online devotions, to be silent, and hear God in many different ways, sitting in a favorite chair by a special window, walking in our yards or the forest, walking the labyrinth, calling or Zooming with friends we could talk about our faith with. God never left us, even though we couldn't gather in this building. When Bill and I walked the Camino over four years ago now, we stopped regularly in churches whose doors were open. The coolness behind the thick walls, the quiet space, the beauty of the windows or the altars, 
all fed our souls and the souls of many pilgrims. Some of the pilgrims were Christians and some were not. We all recognized the holiness of the space and the space was open to all. I know many of us at St. Philip's always want to be a place where everyone is welcomed and included. Hopefully today's scripture will help us to recommit to this goal. Let's make sure that no barriers ever exist here to whoever wants to worship here. Think again about the story today. Jesus as a human being claimed an authority for himself through his words and actions that came directly from God. He could not and would not let rules and regulations of a faith group determine who got to know God. In the body of Jesus, we encounter God. God is revealed in and through the temple that is Jesus' body. Therefore, God can be revealed in and through the temple that is our own body. Remember, we are created in the image of God. Now most likely, we don't often think of our bodies as the temple of God's presence. If you've ever attended a healing service, you've probably heard these words. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Barbara Brown Taylor wrote, it is not possible to lean into God's love for my body without simultaneously recognizing that God loves all bodies everywhere. The bodies of the hungry children and indentured women along with the bodies of sleek athletes and cigar smoking tycoons. <laughs> One of the true things about bodies is that it is just about impossible to increase the reverence I show mine without also increasing the reverence I show yours. So once I value my body as God's temple, as a site of God's pleasure, delight, and grace, how can I stand by while other bodies suffer exploitation, poverty, discrimination, or abuse. God is revealed in and through the temple that is Jesus' body, and therefore God can be revealed in and through the temple that is our body. It is in and through the human form that, the, that God has revealed God's self to us in the, pres, in the person of Jesus. Indeed, our bodies are gifts God has given us. I invite you this week to read that gospel story again and ponder what Jesus may tell us about where God is and how our community worships God and then how we live out God and Jesus to others. How do you use your body to embody the gospel, the good news of God, God's love? How do we show that to other people who are around us? I close with a blessing by writer Jan Richardson. This blessing takes one look at you and all it can say is holy. Holy hands, holy face, holy feet, holy everything in between, holy even in pain, holy even when weary, in brokenness, holy, in shame, holy still, holy in delight, holy in distress, holy when being born, holy when we lay down at the hour of death. So friends, open your eyes, holy eyes. For one moment, see what this blessing sees, this blessing that knows how you have been formed and knit together in wonder and in love. Welcome this blessing that folds its hands in prayer when it meets you. Receive this blessing that wants to kneel in reverence before you. You, who are temple, sanctuary, home for God in this world. Amen.